in three, two. Hello, welcome back to the Optimal Performance Summit. I'm your host, Dr. Patrick Porter. Today, our guest is a health pioneer specializing in chronic and complex conditions. He's using functional medicine, functional neurology, chiropractic, and therapies like neurofeedback and cold laser that create a new space for true healing. His methods have been featured in the internationally, have been featured internationally through a documentary called The Thyroid Secret. Although we're not talking specifically about thyroid, I know it's, it has a role in what you're talking about today, but I thought people should know that. And who I'm talking about is Dr. Ian Holliman. Dr. Ian, welcome to the summit. Thanks for having me, appreciate it, Patrick. And I know that you, you put together a presentation of case studies because a lot of things that people like to know is, hey, how did this work for someone else? So maybe you can give us a behind the scenes look at one of your cases. Absolutely, I'm gonna talk probably about the worst case scenario that can kind of walk into my office. And uh, so uh, we're all grateful that we have, you know, function in our life, that we have, you know, the ability to enjoy life. Um, but this was not the case for this young woman. Um, and we were able to turn a big part of her life around, but that was because she put a lot of hard work in herself. But, you know, um, she actually came in saying that she was broken. And um, unfortunately, that's kind of what happens. Uh, we get the walking wounded coming in. And um, it's just the traditional Western medicine doesn't really know what to do with these people. In fact, she got labeled as uh, what we call um, a, a conversion disorder. They thought it was all in her head. Um, turns out when you do the right labs, and you actually start asking the right questions, uh, you start getting the right answers and you can actually really help people. So that's me. I've been practicing for 11 years here, um, Boulder area. And again, working with chronic, chronic and complex um, immune system conditions, more specifically supporting people with autoimmunity has kind of been my forte. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Um, when a hammer breaks a window, removing the hammer does not repair the window. That's going to be one of the big takeaways from this presentation is why when you get a diagnosis of uh, something like autoimmunity, it could be MS, um, RA, um, thyroid disease, 90% of thyroid disease is actually autoimmune. That's another good takeaway um, if someone is not super educated about the thyroid, um, but there's a condition called Hashimoto's. Well, what happens is, is in functional medicine, we look to try and think and link, meaning we actually are looking at the root cause of what's going on. And after you find these triggering mechanisms that are actually driving the immune system to kind of spin out of control, what we have to do from there is we have to rehabilitate the immune system. Because just by actually, let's say, taking an infection away, fixing, fixing the leaky gut, um, you know, fixing a hormonal issue, an environmental problem, you still have an immune system that's really upset. And that, that quote right there is just what we're talking about. You know, you throw that hammer through the window, great, get the hammer out, man, that window is still broken. <laughs> so um, one out of three Americans right now uh, are suffering from some kind of chronic immune system disorder. Um, that's, and it may even be more at this point, that was a stat from like about 10 years ago, but it's pretty scary, whether it's asthma, allergies, um, you know, these food sensitivity issues that are just rampant with our kids, um, to autoimmune disease, um, there's so many different kinds of immune system issues. And now, obviously, we're talking these, these susceptibilities that, that our immune system are leading us to makes us um, uh, well, puts us in a place where we're not actually as robust to respond to infections, obviously, with what's going on in our, our world right now and the pandemic that's going on. Um, it, it's pretty scary, I think. And of course, it just drives more of the fear, which suppresses the immune system. And so getting more truth around the immune system and how to actually help your immune system. I mean, it's, it's amazing how that can unlock things for everyone. So again, um, this lovely lady here, her name is Elizabeth. She came in, that was her file when she came in. Um, so, uh, it's just one of these patients, again, I call them the walking wounded. They just don't, you know, they've seen so many different doctors, alternative, traditional, and they don't know what to do. So um, what do these things have in common? Insomnia, depression, brain fog, anxiety, and memory loss. What do you think, Patrick? What do those all have in common? Well, they're all talking about the brain and something going on. <laughs> in there the brain. you go. Right. So we could we can take those insomnia and depression and brain fog. We can classify them in different diagnosis categories um, and say, well, it's this, this, and this. 
And then we kind of chop that patient up and say, okay, well, they get they need this medication with that insomnia issue, right? They need the depression medication. Uh, we don't know what to do about the brain fog, but we'll give them the anxiety medication. And then maybe, you know, we'll give them Aricep for the memory loss. So not bashing medications here, but when you start seeing a lot of these combinations of symptoms, you kind of have to ask, well, what's going on? Is it the brain or is it the gut creating a brain issue? Or, you know, like where, where is this, where's the synchronicity of what's going on with all these different symptoms? Um, so, oh, here we go. Um, I'm going to pause those two, but um, let's go through. So again, when she came in, um, basically, she said she had a broken immune system, broken hormonal system, broken nervous system, and broken musculoskeletal system. And this is a very intelligent um, young lady who was tra uh, actually training for a um, half um, Ironman. And um, just the circumstances came up where she actually uh, had a cold, you know, upper respiratory tract infection. Um, and we'll talk, it wasn't just that, but there was other things going on in, in her environment that actually triggered her brain to start to kind of break down. So let's just, I'm going to look at one of these videos here. Hopefully I can share one of these. Oh, I'm going to go back up. Now what I want you to do is I want you to flip that. Let me back. Let's back. No. So the top one is going to flip. Okay. I'm having so, a little nope. issue here. Let me, let me see if I can grab one of these at a time. Now what I want you to do is both I want kind you of start to play. Back. Elizabeth, now do I have your permission no. to take no. you? So the top one is going to stand. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's okay. We can edit it. We yeah, send edit. both of them to us, and we'll edit this right now. We'll, yes. I'll, I'll, I'm going to have you guys just watch. They're yeah. kind of talking over, but you guys can actually watch what's going on when I, I'm doing some neurologic procedures here. And you can see what's going on with her when she's trying to actually. Um, this is called, you know, finger to nose. We're testing uh, an area in the brain, a couple different areas in the brain. But you can see, obviously, this is not a normal pattern as far as what's going on. And then when she, you know, this other uh, video here is, is we call it dysdiatocokinetic, meaning she's trying to do ra rapid alternating movements. Um, so that's kind of where we're at when we first started. Take one hand. Um, which is heartbreaking. And I'm actually having to show her how to do these. Um, these procedures because she, she's lost the brain function and ability to actually do this. And she's really trying. I mean, this, it's, it's, I can see when she comes in, she really actually wants to get better. It's not just again, Oh, well, you're making this stuff up to get attention. I mean, that's, it's really horrible that unfortunately people get labeled like that. Um, so go to next slide. So again, her symptoms here, you know, anything from seizures to bruising more easily um, gastrointestinal issues, anxiety, tremors, you know, brittle nails. Now she's developing chemical sensitivity. Chemical sensitivity, by the way, is a brain-based symptom. Um, there's a lot of, um, of that out there that I see. And, and a lot of times it gets worse over time, which means there's degeneration going on. I mean, there's, we're losing more of that brain function over time. Um, headaches. I mean, there's just so much that was going on symptom-wise. And if we just focus on the symptoms, we lose the patient as we go through this, you know, it's, it's just, it's really sad because you can't just give someone the medication, right? The pill to fix the ill with every symptom that you have. It's just really, it gets very complex. And then of course, then you start needing the medications to help the medications and we go down that rabbit hole, uh, which gets scary. So, um, you know, one of the things I did just to mention this is she was having very specific issues in her brain um, you know, before I actually started promoting exercises um, to help her rehabilitate her brain, um, we had to get in there and actually stabilize her neurons. And what I mean by that is, well, again, we had to go back and find the root cause. We had to figure out what was causing this breakdown in her brain tissue and why the immune system had actually gotten involved. But just so people know, even, even when your immune system gets upset, you also still have to go in there and actually rehabilitate the brain tissue. So that comes from different things. Honestly, there's three things that you have to really keep focused on when you're looking at brain stuff. One is oxygen. I mean, every neuron needs oxygen. So does it get blood flow? Does it actually have a healthy environment for that, that uh, blood flow to come in and, and bring nutrients, right? I mean, neurons are cells just like any other cell. Two, um, and of course that can be done with diet, with exercise, with, with supplementation. There's tons of different ways to actually obviously promote that. But, but a big part again is removing the root cause. Secondly would be 
um, glucose, meaning that do we actually have stable blood sugar? So we know the number one cause right now of dementia in our country is type three diabetes. What's type three diabetes? Well, it is basically insulin resistance or a diabetic issue causing dementia. And that's upwards of 80% of what's happening with dementia in our country as um, it's really because of blood sugar and it's blood sugar handling problems. So got to have stable blood sugar. And the last one is stimulation. So this is where Patrick comes in because if we can actually use things like brain tap, um, other you know exercises and actually start to stimulate those pathways, then when neurons fire together, they wire together. And that means you're creating neuroplasticity. You're actually physically changing the brain. And we know it happens. Some people are like, oh, you can't change, right? Um, that's a common thing that happens in relationships. Mm. You can't change. <laughs> like, no, I can change, right? Um, and it's true. We actually can physically change what happens in our brain. It's why people, when they have strokes and all these other issues and really serious brain problems, they can start to walk again. They can start to talk again. Like this is really, this is amazing stuff that, that happens. Um, so honestly, the diagnosis for me is that, you know, her brain is on fire and her body is on fire and, um, and really um, her environment was on fire too. So we have to then, you know, kind of take a step back and figure out, well, again, where's this coming from and how are we going to actually address this issue. Now, again, her symptoms, what you were seeing there is, is partly her basal ganglia system. And the basal ganglia is this amazing system, uh, tracks in, in the brain that essentially helps to regulate um, voluntary movements. And so that you can smooth those movements down. Uh, a classic example of a basal ganglia um, disease would be Parkinson's, um, which Again, actually, uh, most people aren't aware of this, but most of Parkinson's for what I see in my practice is autoimmune, meaning your immune system is targeting that brain tissue. It's just most doctors are not testing to see, oh my gosh, it really is the immune system. All they're going to do is give you L-DOPA, you know, uh, other basically, um, you know, kinetic agents, things that actually help with that movement. But all it's really doing is it's forcing those pathways to work harder. And then for some people that actually makes them worse, which is a bummer. So that's the system we were talking about, but here's the rub, right? What actually really was happening with her is she had this thing called intestinal permeability or leaky gut. And, um, you know, I always say intestinal permeability when, when um, to, to sound smarter, <laughs> basically. <laughs> But the, the reality is that the actual colloquial term, the, the common term is, is leaky gut. And this is a real true biologic phenomenon. It is not something that doctors can say that doesn't exist anymore. You know, 10 years ago, when I got into practice, I mean, I, I would have doctors that would say, that's not true. There's no, that's, there's no such thing as, as leaky gut. I'm like, well, but wait, it's published medical research. Like it really is true. Um, this is really actually happening. And to have an autoimmune condition, you have to have three things, right? Yeah, I don't care if it's lupus, I don't care if it's a thyroid disease, I don't care if it's RA, you have to have genes, okay? Yes, genes are part of this. And you need to have a, a environmental issue going on, or you know, we call it the environment, and then you need to have triggers. And so ultimately those three things combine together to then turn this process on and this leaky gut process is what really actually instigates this whole confusion of the immune system to start to target our own tissues, right? Normally we shouldn't be targeting our own tissue, but this is what happens. Your body gets confused, dysregulated, and it starts to turn that process on. So our job as good practitioners is to figure out that root cause of what's driving it and then get you to chill. Just relax, man. Put your immune system back on the beach and just let it flow, man. Let it chill and let it calm down. And there's different ways, again, to do that. We'll talk about that. So, oh, and this, this uh, person here, Fasano, Dr. Fasano, if you guys want more information, go read his stuff. He is like the king of celiac disease. Celiac disease is this autoimmune disorder where basically when you eat you know, wheat, rye, barley, cross-contaminated oats, your gut tissue starts to break down. And so our whole understanding of autoimmunity comes from 
uh, Dr. Fasano studies on celiac disease. So it's really fascinating stuff. And, and again, and here's the thing, I'm celiac. So I figured this out the hard way when I was in grad school and my health tanked on me. And so that's how I found functional medicine was about nine different practitioners. Finally, it was the ninth one who figured it out and they said, knock it off. Stop eating that crap doc. I was like, Oh, okay. That was a big part of it. Right? So anyways, Patrick, you know, the, the big thing here and looking at whether someone, you know, develops an autoimmune condition or um, is going to develop other autoimmune conditions, right? Meaning that at the time of diagnosis, 50% of people who have one autoimmune condition will have another autoimmune condition. Okay. It's kind of a crazy stat, but it's true. But there's these the, the really antibodies are predictors because if you know that you had antibodies against your own tissue, that's occurring seven to nine years prior to the disease. So in, in, for Elizabeth's case, man, if we had just known right off the bat that she had antibodies attacking a tissue called GAD65, okay, glutamic acid decarboxylase. So it's basically, it's, a, um, it's, it's interesting because it's, a, it's actually a pancreatic tissue, but it's also actually a brain-based tissue too. It's essentially the break on the brain. It's some, there's something called GABA, G-A-B-A. -A, and GABA is a neurotransmitter and it slows everything down. But with her, she had antibodies that were actually attacking that enzyme. So all of a sudden you don't have a break anymore and it's all gas, gas, gas. So anyways, these antibodies here are critical for us to know what's going on with the immune system. And then actually if the antibodies are decreasing over time, that's a pretty good predictor that, hey, look, you know what? Things could be improving. Um, this is also a critical, critical piece when it comes to autoimmunity here. And again, brain health, as, as a lot of brain-based conditions out there actually have immune system components to it, okay? So again, Dr. Fasano in another research article, he says in 2005, he suggests that the autoimmune process can be arrested, right? It can be stopped if the interplay between genes and environmental triggers is prevented by reestablishing intestinal barrier function. That's a big, that's a loaded statement. Like I'm sure, you know, Patrick, I'm sure you've seen a lot of research out there. Um, and when it's like, rarely do people make claims in medical research, right? Right. But this, I mean, this blew me away when I saw this. It was like, wait a second, you're actually saying the autoimmune process can be stopped if the interplay between genes and environmental triggers is preventing by fixing the gut. Wow. Like, holy cow. And here's the other thing. Remember, leaky gut can be leaky brain, right? And so this is where this, 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 this link between these two systems are so critical to understand. Um, and again, just always going back to it's oxygen, glucose, and stimulation. You get those things, those three things right. And also neurons can start to heal function can come back. Symptoms improve. People don't care about any of this stuff. They're just like, look, just fix me, doc. I'm like, all right, <laughs> here's what you got to do. All right. So after dealing with infections, all right, we call it dysbiosis, gut infections, sinus infections, uh, urogenital, you know, infections, respiratory infections, uh, stress, sources of stress, right? Sometimes, uh, and no one has stress right now in their life. Right? <laughs> Nobody out there. Um, in my lectures, I would go, anyone here don't have stress? Raise their hand. And I'd be like, twice that happened in my career. I'm like, all right, I'm moving in with you with my kids. And just <laughs> you guys will let you know, help. I'll see if you raise your hand at the end of it. Um, environment, hormones, diet, again, leaky gut. Now, again, in her instance, it was environment. That was what was actually driving this issue. So um, for her, there was really a mold issue going on. And I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I wanted to actually show you this slide. This is kind of a, woo, a lot going on slide. Um, but they talk about in this research article how the microbiota or the, or the gut bacteria, right, are significantly altered by chronic stress. So just something to think about. Again, stress just doesn't make us feel bad or it's not just, you know, it doesn't make us feel just tired. It's, it's impacting our, our entire physiology. And one of the areas it impacts is it makes our bacteria in our gut less diverse. So diversity, we know diversity is important, right? Um, but 
the bugs in our gut have to be diverse. Why? Because they do so many different things for us. They help to regulate the immune system. They help to control inflammation, right? They help synthesize neurotransmitters. They help us digest and absorb and et cetera, et cetera. So chronic stress that we're not dealing with, would that be from an environmental source, uh, internal, you know, in, in, internalizing symptoms, um, you know, uh, your boss, <laughs> so somebody out there, right, that's stressing you out. This can actually make our gut worse. And this obviously can create, create more susceptibilities. So for me, again, in my grad school program, you know, for me, I had the, I had the, the Holy Trinity, which was coffee, dark chocolate, and Guinness. <laughs> And that's how I self-soothed, right? Is, is I would, you know, party on the weekends and I use stimulants to keep myself going through grad school. And the reality was that was not serving me <laughs> towards my highest, my, you know, towards, towards the best version of myself. And um, I had to learn the hard way like a lot of us do. Um, but if we can figure out strategies and ways to create the diversity in the gut that goes a long way. Just a quick tip for all your listeners out there. Um, cultured foods are a fantastic way to actually encourage diversity. So um, not only fibrous foods and fiber foods, again, you're vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. And we always hear about this. Well, why are vegetables important? Well, because they have the actual nutrients that the bacteria like to grow on. So that's why they're so critical. And, and, and you know, I'm kind of a paleo Mediterranean guy when it comes to diet. So I'm always hammering my clients. You know, gently hammering my clients, please, you know, like I want like 80% of your diet vegetables and I'm not a vegan guy. Cause I think we, we actually need animal protein in our diet. Um, I think you potentially can do a vegetarian thing um, without having to have animal protein. It just, it just takes a little bit more effort and thought and consideration. It's just more challenging. Um, but that, you know, cultured foods, really good beneficial um, um, uh, fibrous material is going to be really great. Now, the other thing that happens um, is if you're thinking to yourself, well, when I eat a lot of vegetables, I have problems. I get constipation. Uh, maybe I get diarrhea. I'm having issues with that. Well, there's a good chance you just don't have enough enzymes and you need more enzymes to actually break this plant material down. Or if you're like, you know what? I eat animal protein and I struggle every time I have animal protein. Well, you may have a deficiency of hydrochloric acid going on and you need a good digestive enzyme. And there are really good companies out there that, can actually supply all that. So um, just stuff to think about. And this is when you're kind of building yourself back up and getting your health back on track. Now, again, this patient right here was um, in an environment where she was triggered as a result of um, an environmental exposure to, to mold. So she had, um, we call it uh, chronic immune respiratory syndrome or SIRS. And what that means was her immune system got suppressed, leaving her susceptible to other problems and it turned an autoimmune process on as a result of, again, just ex getting exposed to, to mold in the environment. It is so easy to check our own environments. You can actually look at mold plates. Um, you can buy these mold plates. You can throw them down. You can call people if you suspect it. Um, sometimes it's really hard to know if, if this is there. Like I recently had, Patrick, a, an issue where we had mold in our bathroom and we had no idea it was there. It'd been there for months. It, maybe even a year longer. And you know what? Like there just was weird stuff going on with my family health wise. And I said, gosh, we got to figure out if there's something environmental going on. So I started doing these mold plates. Well, turns out there was suspicious species, right? Suspicious things coming back on that mold plate, hired an inspector. They came in, they were like, oh dear Lord, I don't want to go in that room. Like tell you what, that room needs to go. And I was like, oh my God our bathroom, like the whole bathroom. He's like, yeah, got it. <laughs> like, oh my God. You gotta be kidding me. But who, but I'm like, at that point, I'm like, okay, like, this is just what you got to do. Like, I, I can't have my family. I can't, I can't be around that. Right. And like, I'm supposed to be like this super healthy dude. And then I've got a bunch of mold in my environment. Like no way. So, um, anyways, that's a, that's an ongoing story now with, with my family. Uh, but we're dealing with it. So this slide right here, the what's next slide is if you've found the triggers, if you've dealt with the leaky gut, if you've, you know, if you're starting to get your, yourself back on track, if you're getting your footing now, okay? Unfortunately, 
after you drop the, these are actually pictures of uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, right? If you drop bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, you can't just go back to where you were before, right? And, and that's kind of what happens with autoimmunity is there's just damage that's been done. And your immune system is now in this, this state where it goes, uh, what do we do next? And you know what? I know that you, t you got the infection out. I know that you dealt with the, the uh, environmental trigger, but we're still going to keep making antibodies and we're still going to keep attacking that tissue. So that's where we have to say, okay, now what are we going to do? How we rehab this problem? Well, we want to actually do the same thing with the immune system as we do with the brain for rehab, meaning what are the cells of the immune system that we need to specifically stimulate? Those are called T regulatory cells or T reg cells or Fox P3, CD25, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> right, which you want to type in if you're doing a PubMed research. Um, so all you doctors out there, if you're if you're if you're seeing this and you want to verify the information that I'm going through, type type this stuff in, um, and then put in and vitamin D and vitamin K and um, you know uh, bifidobacterium uh, BLO4, like the, the different strains of bacteria that we use in, in like different formulas that are specific to stimulating these cells, because ultimately we have this balance. And as we get autoimmunity and other immune system disorders, not just autoimmunity, but, but I'm, and I'm focusing in on that, but we're talking, I mean, there's lots of immune system conditions out there. This is a critical piece of this, right? So when this says low fat plant polysaccharide rich diet, don't get confused. I'm not a low fat guy. <laughs> what this research study and article is saying is that low um, rancid saturated fat, low um, pro-inflammatory fat, right? Because this is, I mean, we could have another whole other hour on this, right? Of like, what's the best diet? And it's like, look, okay, first of all, don't eat crap. Eat real food. Uh, avoid processed things, right? Things in moderation. All things in moderation, including moderation, right? Um, so, but no, but really like getting good fats in is actually really important. Good carbohydrates are really important. This is war between the two. Um, and ultimately, again, the vegetable matter really does. Vegetable lives matter, right? <laughs> Someone's going to hate me for that. Uh, but but uh, the, the, it's true. Like We have to have the predominant of that because that's going to actually, what we do, it moves us away from activating these TH17 cells. And it actually increases something called interleukin-10, IL-10, which is a big deal when it comes to stimulating your T regulatory cells. Okay. So um, I listed out, this is a little bit of a, this is a good slide right here. I listed out, I think the big things that I see um, in my practice, what I've used clinically, what I studied in my master's program, my, my master's program was all about autoimmunity. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to learn about this. You know, my grandfather basically died because of an immune autoimmune condition. Um, I mean, just so many things that, that I'm passionate about, but this list right here, these are my top guns. Okay. Alpha lipoic acid, right? ALA for short, vitamin D3, right? Sunshine hormone, vitamin K, partly which comes if you have healthy bacteria. And we actually make our own vitamin K if you're eating dark green leafies. Um, so vitamin A, which can be found from liver. Yeah, if you don't like liver, well, you can take it in supplement form too. Um, prebiotics, um, probiotics, EGCG, okay, or green tea. Um, essential fatty acids. There are different things here that um, are really very good. Um, and and prebiotics, there's lots of different kinds of prebiotics out there that you can actually use. Probiotics, the, the, the star behind that is really that, um, you know, we need to um, uh, think about the right strains of probiotics, but we also want to think about um, the, the actual uh, amount of those probiotics is, is really important. And that honestly, that's probably the most important thing when it comes to actually the Treg activation is, is those, these probiotics right here. So, and again, it come from food, it can come from supplements. It just depends on how you guys want to go and get it. Um, vitamin D deficiencies may compromise the mucosal barrier leading to increased susceptibility to mucosal damage and increased risk of IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. 
I mean, if there's going to be one thing besides the probiotics, it's going to be go and get some sunshine, folks. You know, look, we all at times need the sunblock. I get it. Sunblock, not sunscreen. Sun, there's a difference, right? And we're talking about chemicals versus an actual like zinc, something that's blocking that sun. Um, but I believe what the last statistic that I heard of this is north of Atlanta, Georgia. I think it's like a 50 to 60% um, risk of vitamin D deficiency. So if you guys haven't gotten your vitamin D tested, go get your vitamin D tested. It impacts every single cell in your body. It's critical. Okay. And it's cheap, super cheap as far as to get this from a supplementation form. Okay. Optimal levels, 50 to 60 is where we want to see those on your labs. Okay, guys. Now, whoa, this is a lot right here, but let me just break this slide down. All right. I mentioned this before, but interleukin 10, it's a cell signaling molecule, okay? Call it a cytokine. Um, in, so cell signaling, right, interleukin 10 in regulatory T cells is required for this TH17 cell mediated inflammation. So meaning if you don't get enough of that interleukin 10, which is anti-inflammatory, right? Then you will start to increase especially the signaling of the other pro-inflammatory things. So that's basically this TH17, which again, is a little bit, a little bit confusing, a lot, of, a lot of numbers, a lot of, a lot of names here. But basically what they did is that they looked at these other chemicals that are pro-inflammatory, right? And they found that, oh my gosh, when you use those chemicals, which is going to come from poor diet, which is going to come from infections, all these different kinds of triggers, you start to stimulate those regulatory cells in the wrong way. If you are using things that increase interleukin 10, you start to bathe the T regulatory cells in tolerance, in happiness, sunshine, right? We, we make them happy when you do that. So the way to do this, right? I'm just saying that that's kind of just setting this up. That is if you increase interleukin 10, you're doing a good thing for your immune system. So how would we do that? Well, probiotics. So again, don't trust Dr. Ian. It's in the research. It's already there. Anyone can find it, including your doctors, okay? Just whether or not they choose to do that. So safety and immunomodulatory effects of three different probiotic strains um, here in the feces of breast breastfed infants. So this study was interesting for two reasons. One, these specific strains here, right, that you can get commercially, right, these strains right here um, are going to increase the beneficial bacteria, which helps those T regulatory cells, which is what we're trying to do here, okay? Remember, if there's been a bunch of damage, we gotta keep stimulating those cells over and over and over, like we're talking every single day. I have to tell my, tell my patients that every single time, like, look, this is not just taking something, this is not just doing a cleanse for 30 days, folks. This is about fixing the problem and then maintaining the problem, and, I, and I, that's hard. It's a, it's a, a lot of times, this is a mindset change. Like, I'm sure you get this, um, Patrick, but like half of what I do is psychology. It's, you know, like, it's just, it's really getting people to understand, like, if you don't control your health, other people will control your health. Right? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's what's happening in our world right now. It's like, look, if we don't take control, other people get to take control for us. So, but the other cool thing about this study was this intestinal persistence occurred in volunteers who received this uh, lactobacillus rhamnosus. So that strain right there actually was shown after, I mean, after the bacteria were kind of been, you know, supposedly cleared out by the system, it was still there. It's very rare to find um, probiotics that will actually stay in your digestive tract. Now that you may not be aware about that, but when you take a probiotic, usually within three days, it's gone. It, it's, it's already moved on because our flora has kind of been predetermined by about age two. So this is pretty neat that that strain right there can actually actually hang out for a longer period of time, continue to actually help us. Now, the other big one, right, um, that's out here is um, a, a strain, a specific strain um, found um, in different products out there. BLO4 is the name of that strain, Bifidobacterium lactis BLO4. That's the critical one. Look that up if you guys want to find it. Again, that one has been shown to increase interleukin 10. Why can I say that? Well, because there's research that backs it up, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, well, the cool thing is this research was actually showing that colitis 
meaning like an autoimmune disease of the gut tissue, um, basically improved like all the clinical parameters, rectal bleeding, fun, stool consistency, liquid pasty stools, diarrhea, lethargy, like, like a lot of these parameters actually improved when they were using these. And one of those was this BLO4 strain. Okay. So again, it's not just, you know, colitis, but what we're trying to, which I'm trying to get you guys to, to, to think about is take a step back and realize that, well, potentially any autoimmune condition can be improved if we are stimulating these cells in a, in a good way. And that's again, granted, if you've gone after that, you've looked at these, you know, supported these triggering mechanisms, and now you're trying to actually rehab the immune system. So again, just a little bit of a, a boring picture here, but uh, BLO4, again, interleukin 10, that's just this research um, article um, picture showing that, hey, it increased BLO4, but down here on the, the right side, lo right lower, um, interleukin 12 um, did not go up, which is important too. So there's this kind of ratio between these two chemicals in the immune system. And that's a really good ratio that you want with um, um, specific strains of probiotics. So whew, this has been a lot, right? This has been a lot of information that I've just kind of um, uh, thrown at people. I don't expect everyone to get this maybe the first time through. And so I should actually, I want to go right, I want to go back up one more time. I want to hit this again. This slide again for me is like probably the most critical slide um, um, of the presentation. A couple slides are, but this one I think is one of the most important ones. These T regulatory cells are known to impact chronic infection, autoimmunity, allergy, metabolic inflammation, pregnancy, cancer, transplantation, tissue energy. I mean, we're, you know, all, so many critical areas are under the control of T reg cells. Um, Dr. Fasano has shown uh, the correlation between um, leaky gut and over 26 different kinds of cancer. I mean, just these fascinating things are out there because those T regulatory cells are the symphony conductors of our immune system. And we can use nutrition, right? There are no, there's no medications, guys, that are out there that, are, that, that can actually do this. The wisdom of your body is, is already there. And that through this actual either supplementation or through natural means, you can actually help those cells. And that's what we want. We all want a little help, right? Um, let's go through here. Yeah. So again, back to here, right? A couple more slides just to wrap things up. Mechanisms of the disease, right? So if we can stop this leaky gut process, right? If we can remove these triggers and heal that gut, we know based on the research that's out there. And what I see clinically, right, is antibody levels go down, function comes back up. Someone may not be perfect at that point, you know? I mean, that's, that's, that's difficult to go back to perfection, um, you know, because we were all perfect before, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there is a, continu there's a, con a, a continuum, and obviously people can have their optimal health back. That's what's critical. Okay. Hey, Elizabeth. So here we go. Okay to use on the internet. So we're talking process. again about Elizabeth here so and we're three on. months, I think, into it so with her. So I let's go ahead and check some re-exam procedures on her. Uh, yes, please. If you could. Whoa. See any change on that, Patrick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's oh, actually yeah. getting her nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It's not falling over either. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, I have everyone put their feet together, right? So um, huge. And actually, I didn't put the um, follow up as far as on the flip flop as far as her hands back and forth. Okay. So um, actually, no, I think I did this. Let me see if I did that. Yes, I did. Okay. So now here we go. She's going back and forth. Yeah, the top hand as fast as you can go. That's not bad. You're a rock star. Okay. Go to the right side. Let's try that side. And she worked hard. Like, like I, I mean, I, I got to give credit where credit is due. People, you know, again, you can't be a bystander here. You can't just step back. You got to actually participate okay, when you're doing great. these kinds of things. So I send people home with exercises. You know, if you're going to do, I mean, if you're going to do brain tap. Does that work if you do it once? No. It's, <laughs> you might get a nice re relaxation, but it's not going to benefit you that much. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, it'll reset, right? Like <laughs> any therapy that's a good therapy is going to potentially change brain chemistry and something like, like almost instantly. Um, we know that, right. But the rep repetition is why it's so, so important for this. It's, it's huge. Um, and especially, you know, and especially if it can be easy, that's where it's like, Oh, 
I mean, some of these, you know, if you, now that we're getting this place of technology and like some of these devices at home are so easy for people to use. And it's just like, okay, like this is a, a, a again, a no brainer, right? Mm -hmm. So um, back to where we started, right? When a hammer breaks a window, removing the hammer does not repair the window. And again, I give credit where credit is due. Dr. Alex Vasquez said that he is one of my mentors. I've learned a tremendous amount from him. Again, it's in the whole sh standing on the shoulders of the giants, right? We all are where we're at because we've learned from really intelligent people. But if people are telling you that there's no hope, um, you know, don't listen to them. If you haven't found that one practitioner has helped you, that's because they can't help you. You have to start to, to go and find other people that are going to be willing to, to actually invest into you and, and really show you how to get your, your, your life back on track. And that's what it's all about. Okay. Um, so there you go. But That's great. Well, thanks for sharing that case study. That was wonderful. I'm sure our doctors are going to get a lot out of that. I know you also have a gift for them or, or summary of some sort about food. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the gift that they're going to get? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So um, what, if you guys have any interest in, in how um, the diet can actually um, heal both your gut and your brain, um, I have the top seven foods that um, we use in the practice here for um, autoimmune conditions. And, um, and again, especially if you guys, anyone out there you know have, has a thyroid related condition, um, just keep that in mind, very close, very similar issues. So top seven foods that, that actually help with um, autoimmunity, uh, just email marketing at redtail, R-E-D-T-A-I-L, wc.com. Okay. Marketing at redtailwhiskeycharlie.com. Okay. And then we'll send you that, that PDF for free. Okay. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for spending your time showing us that case study. I'm sure it's going to help our doctors. Now, remember, if you're watching this summit, this video is going to be available for 24 hours free of charge. If you know anyone that's suffering from any of these issues or your doctor might not even know about these, please send them a link to the summit videos. Have them watch Dr. Ian here. They can learn some things that could help improve. Maybe it's not you, but maybe it's a family member, a friend, or a coworker. So let's get the knowledge out there. Let's share this wisdom right now because of the we're not doing these live. So this means it's available for anyone, at least for the next 24 hours. So let's, get, let's share the knowledge. Again, thank you for taking your time out to be on the summit with us here, being one of our summit instructors and, and sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and your, your, your patient's success here, which is great to see that, that it's yeah. happening. So thank you. You're very welcome, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. If you're waiting for the next summit speaker, we're going to be right back with you. Just hold on tight. Go over to the, the VIP section. Check out your free gifts there and, and what you're going to get from each of our speakers. So Thank you very much. We'll be right back with you and God bless you. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, they'll, they'll get a lot out of that.